Ciao a tutti, sono Alexander Dario, bentrovati su Genshin Impact! Allora ragazzi, riprendiamo esattamente da dove ho interrotto la volta scorsa. La registrazione era particolarmente lunga, quindi ho deciso di tagliare in diversi episodi tutta questa sequenza del Festival delle Lanterne e in questo episodio in particolare ci aspettano un po' di sorprese. Quindi buon proseguimento ragazzi! Ok, eccoci arrivati. Quindi non siamo al covo, alla tana di Cloud Retainer. Non so perché siamo arrivati qui sulla spiaggia, ma immagino che adesso lo scopriremo. È questo? Quailey Plains? Cloud Retainer, why did you bring us here? God Yu is of course familiar with the name Gui Zhong, but have you ever heard of her? Certo, è, è il nome della ballista, no? Quella che avevamo usato contro Hosile. Gui Zhang è un altro nome di Agentis, la god of dust. She was extroverted in nature and adored social gatherings and inventions alike. Ah. Long ago, this region was yet a prosperous assembly. Gui Zhang often invited her friends to visit her home. Reserving for us seats around the largest stone table. Seagazer would always bring out his latest treasure and place it upon the table. Ah, oh, he could be quite the braggart. Though usually a mild-mannered fellow, when it came to those collectibles he was so fond of, he always loved to show them off. Paimon remembers that name. So that's what Seagazer was like. He was an old friend and a formal rival. One has many memories of him. Once he had brought out the treasure, it would predictably become the center of attention. Neither Gui Zhang nor one was content to let him just steal the spotlight. So we would then also present our proudest mechanical creations. <laughs> Tra l'altro mi viene da pensare come fa lei nella sua forma di uccello a costruire dei meccanismi? Mm, è un po' strana sta cosa, però vabbè, andiamo avanti. As adepti, we were each gifted in our own ways and naturally proud of our accomplishments in our respective fields of expertise. As a result, one often quarreled with Seagazer. His treasures were not even of his own making. He just used his exploration skills to dig them out of the ground. How pray tell could he compare to me? When every single one of one's accomplishments were crafted by one's own hand. <ride> ecco che si sta di nuovo perdendo nei suoi ricordi e si sta di nuovo scaldando. <ride> Cloud Retainer, you are getting competitive again. Eh, infatti. <ride> one digresses. Regardless, every time an argument occurred, Gui Zhang would come over to watch us during our mutual lambastics. On some occasions, she would join in. And on others, she'd take one of us by the limb and start uttering the most ridiculous nonsense. What kind of nonsense? No kind of nonsense were we spared. Sometimes she would brazenly opine, Ah, why argue between yourselves when neither of you could ever hope to beat me? Other times, she would make unsolicited suggestions, such as, Once you two are done arguing, let's go to the foot of the mountain and grill some meat. <laughs> she always sought to make everyone happy. And one must say, she had quite the gift for it. No matter what nonsense she said, one never felt bothered or offended. It also helped that she never referred to one as that illuminated bird or lady bird. You... Come on, get over yourself! <laughs> Anyway, just as our impassioned arguments would reach the apex of acrimony, Marchosius would bring his delectable dishes to the table. Who would dare snub the stove god and his wondrous creations? At the sight of him, we would all immediately drop the argument and prepare the table for a night of feasting and drinking. <laughs> Back then, One was always bothered by how the cups Rex Lapis brought were always too square for one's taste. Can you see yourselves ever enjoying a drink from a square cup? Mm. 
Diamogli corda, sembra una scocciatura. Precisely. So, as you can see, even one as great as Rex Lapis was not immune to making the occasional blunder. Even one could never find fault with Marchosius' cooking. As we ate, Gui Zhang would continue to find topics for conversation, filling the table with humor and laughter. Each of those old fossils had their character flaws and points of obstinacy. So why was it that whenever we dined together, we always had a marvelous time? We would drink together from a spot high in the mountains, until the moon set and the sun rose, and only then would the banquet finally come to an end. Streetwood Rambler would often remain to admire the flowers with Guizhong before returning to her own abode. The glaze lilies were far more abundant back then. Entire fields of them would appear to the eye as a veritable sea of flowers. Streetwood Rambler? Mm. Chi è un'altra degli adepti? Non la conosco. That would be Ping. You ah. probably know her as Madame Ping. Ah, il nome di Madame Ping, Raminga dei Sentieri. Oh, okay. Wait, this is a lovely story and everything, but didn't we come here to find that adeptus from Mr. Dvorak's story? Ma che sia Madame Ping? Or are you saying that it was Guizhong? Didn't she... Alas, long has one avoided this place for precisely that reason. The sights here... A reminder of a time long gone, and evoke much sorrow. One should have guessed that you would disrupt one's poignant moment of mourning with your incessant questioning. No matter, one will share the whole story with you now. Oh. In times gone by, one quarreled oft with Gui Zhang concerning mechanical principles. We each had our ideals, and neither would yield. Under the pretext of a social gathering, one invited the impartial Rex Lapis to judge the quality of our creations. But Rex Lapis declared that Gui Zhang's obscuro vulpus mechanism was superior. Ah, quella era Gui Zhang? Though one was too proud to acknowledge it. E questa era Claude Retainer? Gui Zhang was indeed the superior talent in the mechanical arts. As for the story between Gui Zhang and Streetward Rambler, That begins with a certain bell. In Gui Zhang's opinion, while mechanisms were no substitute for human composers, they were yet capable of producing simple but fine melodies. But Streetwood Rambler believed music to be an expression of the soul, an emotional enterprise that could never hope to be replicated by machinery. Oh. E questa era Madame Ping. They argued endlessly until one asked Rex Lapis to intercede. He confiscated the bell and designated it for ceremonial use. Thereafter, one would often find them convening in the mountains, discussing music, mechanics, and all the affairs of the mortal world. But these good times were not to last. War broke out between the gods and soon engulfed the Guili plains. Gui Zhang was overpowered by the enemy and fell in battle. When Streetwood Rambler and I arrived at the scene at long last, all that remained among the ruins was her lifeless body. After this, at Streetwood Rambler's request, Rex Lapis granted her the cleansing bell for safekeeping. To honor our friend's memory, One made a few finishing touches to her ballistic device. Many lantern rites have passed since then. Many greetings and goodbyes. Upon what do you gaze? The Gwaili Plains? No. It's... everything. We think of human life as like a lantern that's lit one minute and extinguished the next. But are we adepti so different? Perhaps as dust settles after a storm, we too must one day return to the world below. Okay. One has always been austere and private by nature. 
and has never relished socializing. One's dealings with Guizhang were born out of discussions on the discipline of mechanics. What? You have loads of friends! And you seem pretty chatty. <laughs> Just because one is not ignorant of social graces does not mean one is fond of them. One is perfectly capable of partaking in conversation despite being introverted. But in the end, one is nothing like Streetwood Wrangler. She is dauntless but thoughtful, not to mention eloquent and wise. Moreover, her friendship with Guizhang was far greater than one's own. Back when they were rivals, they would often compete against one another in the realm of musical composition. That cleansing bell was one of Guizhong's proudest works, having the ability to both compose and perform. Wait, that's weird. Didn't Madame Ping say she pestered an old friend for that bell? And she also said something about being a vain beauty when she was young or something. Streetward Rambler, a vain beauty. <laughs> My foot. <laughs> that bell has a sad history. Clearly, she refrained from sharing with you the truth of its origins, since the right time had not yet come. As for her old friend, who else could it be? As soon as Streetward Rambler heard that a certain Zhang Li wished to borrow the bell, she realized that the man was none other than Rex Lapis, and that he had made an enormous decision. After all, we all have known each other for several millennia. Some things between us are implicitly understood. Whoa! So they were talking in secret code? Oh, Paimon did not see that one coming. <laughs> Enough of your intrusions. Where was one up to? Ah, yes. One remembers now. The cleansing bell is powered by a mechanical art and can be used to great effect as an accompanying instrument. After the passing of its creator, it was used on numerous occasions during rites of parting. But Streetward Rambler did not acquire it from Rex Lapis for the purpose of producing further funerary tunes. No. Each time she rang it, it was to play the tune that Guizhang composed on it. The two once clashed over their beliefs, about the meaning of music. Who would have thought that with Guizhong's passing and Streetward Rambler's mourning, two tunes composed in discord would eventually become one harmonious composition? <sighs> Once upon a time, Streetward Rambler also loved gatherings, liquor, and music. But after Guizhong passed, she preferred her own company. She could often be found sitting alone at a mountain summit, contemplating and reminiscing with her zither. The music would go from mournful to soothing to impassioned. Many years passed before she finally composed a melody to her satisfaction. In celebration, she played the tune to the clouds. Regrettably, one has only ever heard her play that tune once. Which brings one back to the matter you've been investigating. Perhaps it was during that performance that the ancestor of your Fontaine friend fell into the water and was saved by Streetwood Rambler. Hmm. But if she was so happy with the melody, why would she only play it once? One was also greatly perplexed by this. After suppressing one's curiosity for a long while, one finally approached her and asked why she would retire the tune after having spent so long on it. In response, she said, Though the strings that played that melody survive, the one who inspired it is gone. Tell me, Cloud Retainer, when the one attuned to my soul is no longer here, who else could hope to understand this tune? Hmm. Aww. Poor Madam Ping. I just remember being taken care of by you when I was young. Once the Archon War came to an end, I stayed behind in Liyue Harbor to honor my contract. Although I met Guizhong a few times, I never knew anything of this particular story. 
Gui Zhang was quite the visionary, but tragically passed before her time. Her manuscripts still lie unfinished in the realm of clouds. The blank pages give one cause for contemplation on what might have been. Hmm. Had you not decided to search for that mystery Adeptus, perhaps these stories too would have been lost to the sands of time. As of now, you know the truth. That the Adeptus who rescued the drowning man was none other than Streetwood Rambler. Do you intend to discuss this with her? Hmm. È una scelta difficile. Do you mean Ping might find the topic too distressing? Eh sì. Precisely. The passing of our old friend is a heavy topic that both of us are usually careful to avoid. If I may be so bold, Cloud Retainer, could it be that this is just your own personal opinion? Oh? How so? I've been in Leo Harbor for quite a long time now, and I've witnessed many farewells along the way. So I too am well acquainted with the pain of the passing of a loved one. But this doesn't bring the city or its people to a standstill. They have someone as perceptive and wise as Ping will surely have come to understand and embrace this. Though these immortal mountains have lost an adeptus, the harbor of mortals has gained a wise elder. No loss can ever be undone, but there is always much that can still be gained. Ping has helped countless people and will guide many others in the years to come. And all to whom she extends a helping hand become her friends. People she can admire flowers and discuss music with. Though it is heartbreaking to lose a kindred spirit, life goes on because there are new friends waiting for you further down the road. <laughs> we even asked Madame Ping what she thought about adding a music festival to this year's Lantern Rite. Oh, when we get back, why don't we just ask her if she'd like to perform? Maybe we can even get her up on stage. <laughs> You youngsters and your imaginations. Why don't you come with us? It's been a long time since you last spoke with Ping, and Leo Harbor is always decorated so beautifully during the festival period. Is not every lantern right the same in this regard? Were there ever anything new to discuss, one in Ping could meet any day of the year. Hmm. I disagree. Each new day and each new year is different from those that have come before. How long will you simply let them pass you by? Fallo almeno per Ganyu. Di sicuro non gli dico di farlo per me perché mi manda a quel paese. Hmm. The edibles she brought this time were indeed quite delectable. Very well. Then one will be off. If the other old fossils have sneaked away into the city to amuse themselves, one shall soon find out. <laughs> All right. We should be getting back to the harbor as well. We don't want to keep her waiting. <sighs> Once the Gwaili assembly, now the Gwaili plains. Say, if we planted flowers there and cared for them carefully enough, do you think that one day we'd be able to recreate the Sea of Glaze Lilies? Allow one to take back one's praise from a moment prior. You are still far too given to flights of fancy, child. Ok, è <laughs> tornata indietro. Che succede? What? Cloud Retainer? You were still listening? One observed that you were making no effort to leave and returned to chasten and hasten you. <laughs> <laughs> this time, one is departing in earnest. Ok. <ride> Fantastica. Tra l'altro, ho aspettato che finisse il dialogo, ragazzi, ma la storia che ci ha mostrato è stata veramente molto interessante. Abbiamo visto Madame Ping da giovane e considerando che Ganyu, ma anche gli altri adepti, sono quasi immortali mi domando se sia una sua scelta prendere l'aspetto di una persona anziana stessa cosa per quel che riguarda Vestale delle Nuvole l'abbiamo vista in forma umana e che forma ragazzi veramente molto molto bella quindi 
È stata una sua scelta quella di cambiare aspetto e diventare un uccello? E la stessa cosa possono farla praticamente tutti gli adepti? Queste sono un sacco di domande interessanti a cui per il momento non abbiamo granché risposta e quindi beh, direi che fatte queste piccole riflessioni ce ne torniamo di corsa al porto di Liue. Ok ragazzi, eccoci qua, stiamo arrivando da Madame Ping, quindi scendiamo un po' rapidamente di nuovo, sempre cercando di non lasciarci le penne possibilmente, ed ecco qua che c'è anche Vestale delle Nuvole. Devo cercare di abituarmi a usare il nome in italiano, visto che ormai l'hanno tradotto ragazzi. Wow, Madame Ping? E Cloud Retainer? It appears you made haste after all. One arrived but moments before you. Oh, bless my soul. To what do I owe the honor? How nice of you all to come and visit me. Miss Illuminated Bird, haven't you said anything yet? <laughs> said what, precisely? And why should one be tasked with saying it? Because you're the one who's known Madame Ping the longest. <sighs> Street word. Um, or rather, presumably, you would prefer to be addressed as Ping? Oh, Cloud Retainer, you are uncommonly polite today. One, uh... uh hmm. Non è facile affrontare l'argomento, eh? Given that Lantern Rite is almost upon us, the weather in the city is most pleasant, and a sweet floral <laughs> fragrance lingers in the air. Guardate come la sta prendendo alla, alla larga praticamente, sta facendo un, un giro di parole clamoroso. Uh -huh. eh. Infatti. Uh, all right. So, this all started because we were trying to help Mr. Dvorak find the adeptus who saved his ancestor's life. Quindi gli spieghiamo tutto, ok. Cloud Retainer informed us that the one who played that melody and rescued the drowning man was none other than yourself. Ah, oh, let me think. Yes, I do believe I recall that encounter. Uh. What a long time ago that was. I'm surprised that you still remember it. Even more astonishing, perhaps, is the fact that this story has survived this long at all. When mortal lives are so very brief. <laughs> It appears that she has proven herself right once again. <laughs> Sta parlando di uh, Guizong, eh? Who's she? We like to call her Guizong. Ah, in fact. From the look in Cloud Retainer's eyes, I sense that she has already told you all about her. <sighs> Albeit reluctantly, one might add. There is no harm done. After all, Lantern Rite's very purpose is to commemorate the heroes who gave their lives for Liyue. -e. Although Gui Zhong did not live to see the splendid sights of today, she was as much a hero as any other. Uh, so how has she proven herself right again exactly? Once upon a time, she said to me, that humans were a weak form of life that she wished to protect with her wisdom. But as she interacted more and more with them, her opinions on them began to change. She marveled at the beautiful complexity of their spirits, the sheer splendor of all they could accomplish through their hard work and intelligence. She told us that to underestimate human potential would be to make a grave mistake. With the smallest amount of guidance, enormous power can be unleashed in them. And a human, who has reached their full potential, may well be her equal. Someone who could have as much to teach an adeptus as to learn from them. Hm. She always had a way with words. 
that her mechanical accomplishments were judged superior to one's own was, one suspects, in large part due to her sheer eloquence. Speaking of mechanics, Cloud Retainer, do you still remember that potted plant mechanism? The one that the two of you gave me as a gift? Of course. Gui Zhang and one both put an immense amount of effort into that gift. It would be no overstatement to call it a testament to each of our individual technical genius. As Gui Zhang once said, it takes every blade of grass and every flower to make a homeland. When I see the sight of Liyue Harbor before us today, I am reminded of this. Madam Ping looks very emotional right now. <sighs> of all of us, it was Gui Zhong who was the fondest of these grand and exciting occasions. <laughs> if she were still with us, I'm quite sure she would still be trying to best Cloud Retainer's finest works at every opportunity. Li Yue Harbor is always filled with the sound of music at this time of the year. If she were here, one is certain that she would seek you out to discuss and debate the virtues of various melodies. Oh, yeah! Music! We've been dying to ask. What was the melody that you played back then? Oh, also, with you being such a music expert and all, why don't you join the concert as a performer? I can make arrangements right away. <laughs> as much as I don't wish to dampen your enthusiasm, it's been a long time since I played this zither. My fingers don't have the dexterity they once did. And whenever I play that tune, it always reminds me of her. I start wondering what she would think of the changes I have made to her melody. There was a period of time whenever I started strumming. It almost felt like she was back again. Sitting right there on the stone stool next to me, chatting away. Skybracer and Seagazer too. Looking just like they did in the old days. Hmm. Altri due adepti che non ci sono più, immagino. No matter how much time goes by. The moment that melody starts playing, it transports me right back to that time in my memory. So the past still weighs heavily on your heart? Oh, I would be lying to myself if I claimed to have completely moved on. But that is not to say that grief doesn't get easier with time. Despite the sadness, I have found many things that bring me joy in life. It is simply the nature of the world in which we live that, even if one wished to mourn for an eternity, it would be a nigh-impossible feat. Just look at this potted plant. Isn't it stunning? It takes an honest and open mind to confront and conquer grief. You have indeed made progress. <laughs> be that as it may, I shall leave the lantern right stage to the youth of today. Well, if you're sure. Granny! <laughs> oh, Yan Fei. Whoa, what's everyone doing here? Did something bad happen? <laughs> ah, and now we've spooked Yan Fei. <laughs> no, no, everyone's just here to give me their regards for the holiday. Oh, that's wonderful, I'm glad. Well, in that case, Happy Lantern Rite, everyone! Anche a te. Happy Lantern Rite! Oh, I... I just remembered that I have some... Uh, work to do at Yue High Pavilion that I need to discuss with Yenfei. I haven't been able to find a chance until now. I will leave Mr. Dvorak in your capable hands. Cloud Retainer, Ping, we will be off for now. Huh? Does it have to be right now? Which case is this again? Hey, Ganyu! <laughs> it seems Ganyu still has much to learn when it comes to the art of deception. <laughs> Voleva lasciarle da sole. What a pity. She has learned nothing of one's ability to carry a conversation. Meglio se non impara da te la conversazione. Since it's been so long, Cloud Retainer, why don't you stay? I'll make a cup of tea and 
We can chat a while. Gladly. This was one's intention as well. When you next see the Fontaine musician, please give him my regards. I'd like to wish him the very best with the concert. You got it, Madam Ping. Thank you all. I think you've listened to enough of my nattering for one day. As for that melody, I will play it for you all another time. <laughs> Goodness knows I need to practice it first. Wow, that'd be great! We'll look forward to it! <laughs> when that time comes, wherever her spirit may be among the countless grains of sand and specks of dust between the harbor and the mountains, perhaps she will look at the Leoa of today and steal a smile when she sees the prosperous land that it has become. <laughs> All right, let's go tell Mr. Dvorak the news. Ok, quindi andiamo a fare rapporto a Dvorak. Gli abbiamo trovato chi aveva salvato suo nonno, quindi dove dobbiamo andare però? Vediamo un attimo sulla mappa. Ok, si trova praticamente davanti al al palcoscenico del concerto quindi dobbiamo andare no, non giù di qua, no, no, no ferma tutto non è giù di qua, è più avanti allora facciamo il giro ragazzi ci butteremo direttamente da qua, dalla piazza dovremmo arrivarci proprio sotto dico bene? Esatto, lo vedo finalmente. Ok, 